So, so I have to admit that I am dyslexic and somehow managed to completely misread his email as five slides, one minute long each for five minutes. So I have far fewer slides to which I will subject you. Okay, now I have to be under the bright lights far too early in the morning. Okay. I'm ready, yes. So I'm going to talk to you about the problems with getting cratered. <laughs> We, we all have this, this idea in our head that the reason the dinosaurs died is this asteroid fell from space, dust went into the atmosphere, planet cooled off. And, and the problem with this is that the fossil record of where the dinosaurs died is like this thick, which means it was like instant. They died. They were gone. There was no time for them to just kind of literally chill for a while watching the plants die due to lack of sunlight, due to dust in the atmosphere. And it turns out if you actually do the maths, which no one wants to do, so it hadn't been done until the past couple of years, asteroid comes, hits planet, breaks, shatters, spews material, including dinosaurs, up through the atmosphere into outer space. There are probably dinosaurs that visited the moon, just not in a living pieces. <laughs> and, and as the rock and chunks came back, they cratered Earth and gave off heat that heated the planet pizza oven temperatures. And we've experienced some of this in the city of Chelyabinsk, where a asteroid came down, very small one luckily, we're very glad for this, and it attacked Siberia, which is only, like, it, Siberia is where modern Earth likes to be attacked by asteroids. And, and when it came down, it blew up in the atmosphere and shattered pieces everywhere. And it was the shock wave that caused the most damage because people saw a flash of light going through the sky, came to their window, stood next to their window, shock wave hit window, shattered glass into their faces. So if you're most likely to be hit by an asteroid, it's because you're getting hit with the shock wave and the energy that these suckers give off. These are energetic phenomena, and it's the energy that the dinosaurs and the human beings in Siberia have to worry about most. Now, there's also this myth that places like the Moon and Mars are just kind of hanging out, non-changing dead worlds. Except this particular crater was formed in the past few years. We know this because we have high-resolution spy satellites spying on our own robots on the surface of Mars. These are otherwise known as planetary probes doing exploration. They just happen to have the same technology as spy satellites, which amuses me to no end. Um, so on Mars, where we have higher resolution science data because the government doesn't want us to have the same data for the planet Earth, we found this little crater that probably would have fit about in this room, except for the splattery bits, um, it was formed by a recent rock. Space is constantly hitting us. Here on the planet Earth, we're getting hit by about 100 tons of big material and 100,000 tons of dust, granules, pebbles. All that stuff you call shooting stars or meteorites, that's really just shit left over from comets. Now, when people think about the comets and the asteroids traveling through our solar system, they imagine Han Solo's asteroid belt, and that is not true. You ask pretty much any asteroid, uh, any artist to draw an asteroid belt, and this is the picture you get. The problem is if I go out and I stand on Vesta, which, which I haven't got to do, but I've got to watch the views from the, the, mess, the Dawn mission, which kind of orbited it and got really awesome pictures, you don't see any asteroids anywhere around you. The only way you're going to see an asteroid from another asteroid is that that other asteroid is orbiting the asteroid you're on, like Ida and Dactyl have a tendency to do. Space is mostly an empty place, with the average separation between asteroids being about 10 times what the separation between the Earth and the Moon is, and most asteroids are a hell of a lot smaller than the Moon, so you're just not going to be able to see them at that kind of a distance. So with all of this rock out there, people are always concerned, what about the rock that's going to hit? us. There are lots of rocks in space with Earth crossing asteroids. These are called Apollo asteroids, which means the rock that hit Chelyabinsk was an Apollo asteroid, and I got to tell that to Richard Hatch, which made me giggle a lot. So, so there's this fear that we're going to get hit by the next big one, and people keep saying, oh, that's not really something. Yes, that's something you actually do need to worry about, as the people in Chelyabinsk discovered. There 
aren't any large ones we know of that are going to hit, up, hit us. And there's all these rumors that Apophis in the next however many decades is going to fly through the keyhole, get bent in its orbit, come back and smack the Earth somewhere between California and China, cause a tsunami and wipe out everything to the Rockies and wipe out Asia. Not so bad about some of that, but it's not true. What we actually have to worry about are the asteroids that are in highly elliptical orbits and come zipping at us out of the sun. So while you shouldn't look at the sun, that's where death is coming from. Thank you.